when I did uh, uh, my thesis, I started, it was like, where can you find a job? Yeah, I mean, it was really, um, there are no jobs. I mean, are you crazy to do just experiments? I actually tried also theory and was not very successful, but I'm now doing my first theory paper. Um, so, I mean, you're sitting here and you're all thinking, well, experiments are nice, but this might be our virus, yeah? So, um, it is not the case that all people in the world, all economists think that experiments are valuable, especially lab experiments are valuable. Yeah, so um, this is a false consensus if you think experiments are valuable. Yeah, um, so this fight or this thought for a PhD student, should I become a theorist or should I become an experimenter is actually a very old question and a very old fight. Confucius, uh, 2,500 years ago, there must have been the same problem. I mean, there were people who were just thinking, reflecting, philosophizing, and they wanted to change the world. They wanted to create institutions, and they clearly thought that they were better. Then where there were people who were just looking and counting, counting with stones maybe. They had not much paper, so it was really difficult to count and make observations. So Confucius said, let's bring that all together, and he said, there are three ways to wisdom. First, by reflection, which is noblest, we all agree. Second, by imitation, which is easiest. And third, by experience, which is bitterest. And this is really true. If you get data, it's pretty bitter to see what's going on, especially if people are not rational in our sense. So, but you can choose, basically. As a PhD student, you can choose the first, the third. A second, well, maybe you should not be a th researcher. <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> so the second uh, you basically do as an undergrad. Um, but then, so these people, they said, well, I'm one or the other. But then uh, Confucius also said, learning without thinking is useless, and thinking without learning is dangerous. So if we replace thinking by theory and learning by experiments, we understand it a little bit better. And um, yeah, so Confucius had, uh, the people then had big problems because they had no paper probably, they had definitely no computers, but they already had the same problem. Yeah, I mean, you could have thought reflection is a little bit easier and we, they wanted just to reflect. And most of the literature we get from them, I think is mainly reflection, 500 years, like Platon and et cetera. Um, so what is the big advancement in experimental economics? And that's not a joke now. Um, it's actually the computer. Yeah, if somebody comes to us and says, well, you have done this one period, why don't you do 100 periods? I mean, to do the 100 periods without computers is quite difficult. I mean, we can do 10 periods with paper and pencil. Um, this is difficult. And actually, when I did my thesis, Programming lab experiments was really difficult. So it took mostly two years, and I thought, I'm not going to program two years, and I still can't program. So I didn't program, and I did my experiments with pencil and paper. Um, so basically, these advancements, internet, new tools like mouse labs, clicking, choices. Uh, we get into cognitive processes. We can do lots of uh, ex um, uh, rounds, we can get subjects from all over the world uh, at the same time. All this has really, in the last two decades only, advanced very much experimental economics. Now I, I show you new fields. Field experiments is only since 1997, more or less. Neuroeconomics, basically 10 years. And this is, I mean, that was really a surprise that suddenly we want to look in the brain. Yeah, I mean, who's interested in the brain? Who's interested in processes? Um, economists were basically only interested in outcomes. And it is, this is one big fight, yeah. Should we be interested in blood pressure? Uh, and should we be interested in children? Should be interest, we should only be interested in experts who are rational, yeah? Um, so gender is another field that was only recently founded. Of course, we have great advances uh, in institutional design, the FCC auction. So when Christopher Sims was here, he said, oh, experiments are great for that, but otherwise we have no money. NSF has no money for other research and experiments. It might be cheap, but the cost-benefit relationship is not that high. Um, recently, um, 
I've tried with my friends John Duffy and von Kahnemann to also enter fields which are still very critical. Um, that is macroeconomics, finance, banking, and international trade. So one of our colleagues said, but isn't it great experimental economics also for macro? That was a macroeconomist from UPF. I said, well, um, I think you got the virus, but the virus in other macro departments is not there yet. Uh, and they are very critical and rightfully maybe critical. Um, so there are new descriptive models since 20 years. Um, Ramon has talked about learning. I will show you, if I have time, about cognition. Um, and uh, Jordi has already said it's highly interdisciplinary, so I have subjects now which are chimpanzees. Um, and we also look at people with um, brain lesions. Um, so these are clearly far away from experts in the usual sense, but uh, we can also learn something from them. So now I give you, I mean, I could ask you what's your question, and maybe I can make up quickly an experiment, but this takes time, usually two, three years. Uh, so um, I will ask you my question. What is boundary rationality? Yeah? So I will give you a mini tour through experimental economics, touching um, field experiments, lab experiments, and neuroeconomics. Um, so first we need to find a good game, and I will show you a good game. And then, then we do a variation, so we um, might say two people or ten people or a thousand people, or we shock the people. Here we shock people, not the matrix, uh, as we heard in the first talk. And um, so we asked which equilibrium is selected, and then we can look really at deeply what is the boundary rationality. So the um, work I take is um, you might be familiar, so you choose a number, the numbers are select all collected, you take the average and two thirds six times the average, and you have to, have to be closest to that, and the closer you are, the higher your payoff. This has nice equilibrium structure. It's a unique equilibrium, which is Pareto optimal. So you would ask, why should we do such a silly experiment? I mean, it's a great equilibrium. We should, I mean, everybody should play it. But unfortunately, people don't play it. And can you say more than they don't play it? So here I show you various treatments. So these are six different, different populations. The first one is the lab. Then we have theorists and the field newspapers. And you see clearly the equilibrium is chosen very differently. The average can be 35, 20, um, or 30, so very different. So this is quite dramatic. How can you make prediction in such games? And you might think this game is pretty silly. However, it's like a string in all Ramon's uh, experiments, so it's everything about expectation. I mean, economics is basically this game. You have to think what the others are doing, and if there's one, more than one player, you might need to aggregate um, um, all the players' behavior and then see, uh, think what they are doing. And that's a big problem. I mean, you think about them, something you have no clue, you have no anchor, yeah, and, well, that's the mess you get as an outcome. So you will see no possibility. No, but if you have taught it, you know, if you play it your, against your undergrads, you know which number you should choose, namely more or less 22. Now, let's go to the field and do the same experiment to the field in the newspaper. So we announced it in the newspaper, Anthony. Um, and here we have three newspapers. So on the left, on the right, and down on the right. Uh, expansion also. And you see, well, my, maybe you don't see it, but the average is based, uh, the winning number is 13, 14, 16, so pretty close. So we can do predictions if we know the subject pool. Yeah, but this is a problem. Not always you know the subject pool. Yeah, but we have to think, I mean, especially macroeconomists who do policy uh, implications, and this is all based on equilibrium, but maybe you are not in equilibrium. So maybe your policy fails. It's bad when uh, people are not in equilibrium because then you can trick the system. You can be better than the others. You can get higher weights. So can we at least, uh, so let's describe the behavior. We can, we see a clear structure. And this is a so-called level uh, K model. And Keynes already introduced it. And if you can't read Keynes, maybe you can read it at home. Uh, the beauty contest is actually due to Keynes. So, I mean, you don't know what to do in this game. You choose a random number. The average will be 50. Two thirds of that is 30. So you see clearly a spike at 30. And let's see. No, I didn't try that out. 
um, well, it's at 30 at um, 22, and then a spike at um, zero. So we see patterns, yeah? And this model, actually, this level K model, um, gives us a lot of explanations also in many other um, papers and other games where behavior is far out of equilibrium. So people have some naive idea about what's the right answer, and they give best reply, and then they stop. Well, maybe some others are better, and they don't stop and go on. Well, the, uh, under common knowledge of rationality, you converge to the equilibrium. So let's look into the brain. I promised you a tour. So we look in the brain, we put you in the scanner, and then we let you do this experiment. I mean, we need to change a little bit the design. And then we indeed see on the left, uh, not much. These are people who choose 33. Um, and on the right, these are people who choose 22. I mean, we can separate people according to what they choose. Yeah, and then we can look what how their brain looks like. And I actually can tell you something more. We also let them do calculations. And there's nothing with calculations. And basically, my um, analysis of this is when you just do calculations, you don't activate our main part, which distinguishes us from, monkey, uh, from chimpanzees, the medial prefrontal cortex, which is the theory of mind. Yeah, so that's why I also say that we have to do experiments, because we have to... Uh, think what the others are thinking. If you just do fixed point calculation, you don't think what the others are thinking. You just do math, which you do actually in high school in grade eight. Yeah, fixed points. Yeah. So <coughs> let's go to behavior over time. Things converge. How much time do I have? Okay, good. So things converge, but very differently. If you have 15 players, it converges faster. If you have three players, it converges less fast. So again, heterogeneity according to the parameters you choose. If you choose four thirds times the average, well, you have zero as an equilibrium, but 100 is a stable equilibrium, which is no surprise. We, if you do it with negative numbers, like minus two thirds of the average, that's what Ramon was talking, that's the negative feedback, you converge much faster, which is also obvious. Um, well, how about new entrants? You say, oh, we converge eventually, so we can eventually do policy implications. Well, but what is eventually? If you get new entrants, then you will always stay away, like a ball. Yeah? I mean, you always puff the system, and you, you will always be away from equilibrium. So we can show you there are, sometimes you don't get at all to equilibrium. That's a paper by... Um, uh, by Jonah Brands and Vivis. So we have two equilibria here, a sharp curve and a rather flat curve, and the data is just like the flat curve, and this is exactly due to level K. People have a naive understanding, they give best reply. In one model, you are just in equilibrium. In the other model, you need more levels, and so you are forever far away because you can't figure it out. So the naive players actually drive your behavior. So it's not that naive players are always driven out. So as a conclusion, uh, in the language of Confucius, there are three ways to wisdom, and that's maybe more holistic thinking. We have reflection, imitation, and experience. So what I think is great in economics, we really, I mean you, who do models and modeling, this is really what economic economists are best in. They know how to model complex situation in a stylized way. And I think no other social science or natural science can do that. And you even figure out mathematically in a stylized way things like equilibrium, rationality, and efficiency. Yeah, but that's math. Yeah, and it's very important to, for us experimenters, the structure of, of the entire strategy space. Then we as experimenters, we have to understand what in, uh, happens in these models, what the behavior is about, and in the different institutions, so we can do it under, with many players, with few players, with experts, etc. and we see the different effects. And then what is in between, sandwiched in between, that's basically what we have to give our students. We have to give our students both. I mean, just to calculate fixed points is not enough because the brain does not get really completely activated. I mean, they do that at home, of course, but um, maybe they have to also 
get the activation in an experimental way, because then also we can do more complicated models, as Umberto and Gianmarco and I do in our first year of undergrads, f um, first year, first quarter. We always introduce the theory with an experiment, and so they learn more complicated models, like network externalities. I mean, you all know that this is a very difficult model, but we can do it in the first year, and they can understand it. Okay, that's it, and all together, we, can we have to create institutions and mechanisms with a human touch, that's also important. That's what you get out of experiments. I mean, efficiency might be nice, but it's unequal. Um, and we let our students, for example, be two minutes unemployed, so they might never in later in their life be unemployed, but maybe then they feel how it is, and then they might create better institutions and a better world. Okay, that's all what I want to say.